The following segments are pre-recorded and sponsored by Longworth Productions. Understanding elder abuse on Try It Today. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another episode of Try It Today coming to you once again from the beautiful Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. We'll tell you more about them later on and later on is when our famous roundtable shows up. We'll get into all sorts of controversial topics, so stay tuned for that. Lots of great guests, important information coming your way throughout the half hour. But where we want to start is talking about an organization that does a lot for so many people. And two great guys are going to help us with this. Chris Gorman is president and CEO of Triad Goodwill. And Chris's special guest is Brian Clarita, Dr. Clarita's board chair uh, of uh, Goodwill, Triad Goodwill, and also a clinical professor at UNCG, fellow Spartan. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Chris. Me too. Chris, let me start with you. Remind us what the mission of Triad Goodwill is. Improving lives and enriching communities. Uh, and it doesn't just go outside of Goodwill, but internally. All 500 employees, we really want to make sure we're improving their lives in some way, shape, or form. And you're really doing that. If I had to put you on the spot and ask you to come up with maybe a top three accomplishments over the past 10 years or so, what would, what would you say? Well, first, it's the people, right? Making sure that they have the tools, uh, resources necessary to be successful. Uh, when we recruit uh, individuals to come work at Triad Goodwill, we're interested in one thing. Are you interested in improving your life? Uh, for some people, they're there for a job, for others a career, but regardless, we want you to develop yourself while working at Triad Goodwill. It's not just about coming in and clocking in and out every day. It's right. really about what resources we can provide them so that they can develop themselves personally and professionally. Right. Well, it's a great mission. And Brian, I want to turn to you. And, and how do you see, as board chair, how do you see the organization, how it's involved? How does it evolve, say, over the past three or four or five years? Absolutely. Great question. We know everything starts with the culture of an organization. And Chris and his team have come in and did a fantastic job working to reshape the culture of the organization. And they've done that through many different means. One is they had a company come in and work with them. And that company came in and did focus group with all of the employees. They did surveys with the employees. And this was an opportunity to hear directly from the people that are part of the culture, right. who are the employees and figure out things that needed to be changed or things that are working well and from that they took that information and they made the changes that were necessary and we feel like we're moving in the right direction because people seem to be happy working there and we know that's a sign of people wanting to be a part of that culture. Sure, Chris, look into your crystal ball for just a second and tell me what's on the horizon for Try a Goodwill. Uh, more services for our employees and individuals outside in the community. Uh, we're looking at cr creating more high quality services so individuals have access to not only training programs but curriculums that help them land a wonderful career. And what we mean by careers, we want to make sure that we're moving the needle on economic mobility that families have not only a sustainable wage but their children also have access to that. And you know what's really unique about Goodwill Industries is so many people from so many walks of life come into our doors. Uh, we have right now four generations of people working in our offices and so we have to understand what it is they need but more importantly create wraparound services for individuals based on those needs. How can the community support your mission? Well first of all donate, right? We all know uh, what Goodwill does. We, we are a volume driven business with a purpose, but that's not why we're here. We're here to improve lives and your donations directly do influence how and we And helps fund this program. Very quickly before time runs out, Brian, you're busy. I know a little something about UNCG and how busy you must be in professor and responsibilities. Very quickly, why did you want to sort of spread yourself thin and say, I want to help with this? Absolutely. Just hearing all the great things that Goodwill is doing in the community, and more importantly, they're putting people back to work. And we need people working. So it was exciting to be a part of it. Absolutely. Up on screen, try at goodwill.org is the website, which I hope you will visit. And as Chris mentioned, please donate items. That what it makes everything go around. And uh, the, those items can be resold and go into funding all these great programs. To Chris and to Brian, thanks for all that you guys did. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be right back after this. Need help buying food? Everyone needs help sometimes. 
Food and Nutrition Services may be able to help you buy food and free up your money for other expenses, such as utilities and medicine. To receive FNS assistance, households must meet income limits. You may be able to get assistance even if you own a home, car, land, property, or have a retirement plan or money in the bank. Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina team members can help you with the application process over the phone. To receive help or if you have any questions, call 336-422-7758. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth reminding you that Try It Today is now streaming on WFMY Plus, available free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Back now on uh, Try It Today, and we're always glad when this special guest can drop by and give us an update on what's going on with Shift Ed. And we're talking about Elizabeth Paul, of course. She's Vice President of Donor Impact for Shift Ed. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, for folks that haven't uh, seen us before, and shame on them if they haven't, uh, or just moved into the area, just remind everybody what Shift Ed's all about and who you Shift, serve. Oh, Shift Ed is all about Guilford County students. Um, and we're looking to change that and expand a little bit. But for right now, we are here to do all the education support services and scholarships we can to get our students uh, in a place where we can boldly accelerate their potential to the fullest. Absolutely. And uh, Wendy Poteet, of course, President and CEO of your organization, who's going to be on the roundtable later on. Right. But uh, she was here last month or a few weeks ago, and we touched on the big announcements. I just want you to remind everybody, because this is so huge, about the grant that you got and how much it was for and who it came from and what it's going to do for you. Whew, um, I'm still pinching myself. So uh, I'd hate to make a joke, but a little known tech giant called Cisco um, took notice of our programming, uh, especially after we partnered with a nationally known program called SEO Scholars. So right. we have rolled that out in Guilford County. Um, it's gotten a lot of national attention, but Cisco in particular approached us and asked, you know, what what can we do to engage with you more and partner and be on the ground floor of expanding this out to as many students as possible? Um, so they, they have come in big. They are going to give us $8 million over the next four years, wow. um, help us roll out some programming to get people certified in um, certain areas of tech so they can go right into the workforce, but they're mostly interested in investing big time in helping us scale and expand our programming. You, you mentioned a word uh, a few minutes ago, partner. And uh, it just on a, I mean, aside from the grant and all that great news, uh, on a daily basis, uh, what kind of partnering do you do with businesses in the community? How, what, tell me about that. Um, well, it's it's true that it does take a village. We, we can't do all that we do just with our small but mighty staff. So it takes good, um, wholesome relationships with the school district but also now that we're looking to get more into the business community and make sure that our students are graduating with jobs of the future in hand, um, we're reaching out every day and making new connections with foundations for funding, um, but also foundations that are part of corporations like the Cisco's of the right, world right. Um, who can really help guide us about what are the jobs of the future and what programming and investments can they help us make so that those are ready to go for the next generation. Yeah, and you guys are really big on as you say, getting kids prepared and getting the, for, for the next step, which for most of them is college, and you talk about scholarships, but uh, you have a campaign going on, I understand. I think Wendy sent me an email one day about you're honoring graduates. What is that about? Well, it's graduation season. So yeah. um, I feel like this is the time of year for students to be celebrating their accomplishments and where they're getting promoted and going on to next. Um, so because this is the class of 2023, I can't believe it, uh, we are asking folks to consider making a donation of $23 in honor of our 23 graduates. If you are feeling a little more generous than that, you could even consider uh, giving your own graduation year. So I'm going to ask you, Jim, what graduation year were you? Uh, 1898, and, and I'll be giving you $18.98. <laughs> I don't know what. Oh, quickly before we... Thanks for embarrassing me. And uh, uh, the uh, one thing before time runs out, I want to ask you. A lot of people say, hey, I don't have any kids in school, Elizabeth. Why should I give? Why should I support? Um, I think we had a really amazing event uh, at the beginning of this month where a really well-known billionaire businessman came to town and uh, gave what I'd like to call a sermon about the importance of education fueling um, the workforce of the future. Uh, we cannot have and recruit and retain good businesses and good work-life balance here in Guilford County without prepared students. Um, and what we know is we don't have a talent gap here. We have an exposure gap right. and, a, and a job gap. So um, 
whether or not you have children, I guarantee you know someone who does or you know someone who owns or works in a business that needs those students to be there for the, for the prosperity of the company in the future. And a good investment. And you can check out shifted.org slash what's next for information. And you can also go to the general website, shifted.org. Elizabeth, thanks. Thank you, Jim. We appreciate you. Great work. 1898, remember that. <laughs> we'll be right back. What are you waiting for? Your future awaits at Guilford Technical Community College. Make amazing happen. You know, it's hard to believe the Safe Sober program has been going strong for over 30 years. And over 600,000 students have made the pledge to stay safe and sober on prom night. You know, Griff, it's had a huge impact on our community. Yeah, you're right, David. And now we're making sure the message continues year round so everyone can join us in supporting our students. Learn more and take the pledge at safesober.com, sponsored by Daggett Schuler. Back now on Try Today, and I guess everybody watching uh, and in the sound of my voice will say, gee, we know that the economy is rough for some people and we don't know where it's headed. And what about stability? And I just happen to bring in an expert that's going to help us through that topic. With me right now, Rich Schmidt. He's Ch Chief Financial Officer for Enmar Intelligence. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you having me. Before I get to the things I really want to ask you about, just remind folks who might have just moved in the area uh, what Enmar is and does and how it impacts our daily lives. Yeah, so I could spend a lot of time talking about that, but you know, I think the easiest way to describe Inmar is we are what's commonly referred to in the industry as a tech-enabled service provider. So that's a fancy way of saying we use technology solutions to help our clients do things more efficiently. Right. And um, you know, we've got over 15,000 clients across the country. Um, we service grocery retailers, retail pharmacies, hospitals. And of course, if I'm a customer of one of those, you got millions of people that are you know, involved with the transactions that you help. That's, That's right. just great. What, what's, uh, very quickly, what's your background? Because we haven't had you on the show before. What's, what's your background and why you have an interest in this area? Yeah, absolutely. So I started my career in public accounting. I've been with Inmar for over 23 years. I've been the CFO for about nine. And uh, you know, really, in my role as the CFO, Ultimately, my job is to make sure that Inmar is deploying its capital and human resources to maximize value creation, and that's you know, for all of our stakeholders. So that starts with our clients, then our associates, and our shareholders. You know, I think it's safe to say that Inmar Intelligence has always sort of had one common mission, which is that you, know, you want to improve the lives of, cons of consumers, you want to make businesses work smarter, and I get all that, but let's go back to this economy thing. Mm -hmm. um, the status of our economy right now, is that having any kind of impact on your ability to perform your mission? You know, it's interesting. Um, we're somewhat fortunate in that our clients are really looking to us as an avenue for how they're able to be more efficient. And so, you know, what we're striving to do every day with our associates is to make sure that we're getting better at what we do and delivering that value every day. And so we have a mantra of saying, hey, get 1% better every day. Obviously, that's not a linear movement always, but that's, that's our goal and we're pretty successful at it. In doing so, you know, during these uneven economic times, our clients really re lean into that with us. Yeah, and I guess just to keep going with that theme, I mean, with a high rate of inflation, high interest rates, uh, give me an example. I mean, how, do you, how would you help a client sort of improve their financial stability? How, how would that happen? Yeah, so really, it, it's two ways. Number one, you know, we are oftentimes when a new client comes to us, they're typically saving money in deploying our services as opposed to doing things themselves. Gotcha. Uh, and whether that's taking costs out because of our ability to work between other trading partners that they work with, or it's simply because you know, we're able to do it more efficiently because we have more scale. So you know, we, we have clients that range in size from Fortune 100 all the way to emerging brands, many of which in the, are in the triad. So you know, even for the big companies, we're often able to save them substantially in terms of the effort they have to expend. Well, now, how are these uh, mentioned, things I mentioned, like high interest rates, inflation, how is that impacting uh, consumer confidence and consumer spending? And what can you do to sort of mitigate risk in that area? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a big issue, obviously, for consumers today, right? So both the inflationary environment and interest are sort of the double whammy that are taking money out of consumers' pockets. You know, 
Inflation over the last 18 months has often been over, you know, over 10 percent. Uh, it's still, while it's eased off, it's still double or triple what the Fed's 2 percent target rate is. Right. The result of that is consumers are paying more for everything. You know, variable interest rates on their credit cards, their their mortgages. They have to go get a new car loan. That's also taking money out of their pocket, and that ultimately results in less money for discretionary spending. Right. So the things we're doing, in addition to making our clients more efficient, is we are delivering savings through our clients, through our retail clients, to consumers. And in 2023, our digital coupon platform is on pace to deliver $10 billion wow. of savings to consumers across the country. That's just for me. No, that's for, <laughs> that's for the million. You get to you clip like, every day. You yeah, get your, get your day. piece of it. Well, no, <laughs> seriously, I mean, that's, that's the way to do it, and helping people save money up on screen. Nmar.com is the general website you can go to for more information. Rich, will you come back sometime? Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for all your help and helping me understand this. We'll be right back after this. Are you looking to jumpstart your future in the fast-paced, rapidly growing food industry? In Second Harvest Food Bank's Providence Culinary Training Program, you'll learn the craft and art of cooking, plus business and management skills, science and nutrition, and essential life skills. Providence Culinary Training has helped hundreds of individuals just like you launch successful culinary careers. There's no reason to wait to turn your passion for food into an exciting career. Check out the upcoming class schedule on our website at ProvidenceWS.org. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you to catch my column, Longworth at Large, and Yes Weekly, every week. It's available throughout the triad, or you can go online, yesweekly.com. Back now on Triad Today, I'd like to spend the next few minutes, if we could, talking about the very serious topic of elder abuse, understanding it, dealing with it, preventing it. And two lovely ladies are going to help us experts in the field. With me right now, Adrian Calhoun is Director of the Area Agency on Aging for the Piedmont Triad Regional Council, and Kim Johnson, Senior Long-Term Care Ombudsman. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Adrian, before we get going here, just sort of remind people what the mission of the agency is. Sure. The Piedmont Triad Regional Council's mission is to improve the lives of our community through creative regional solutions. And Kim, how are you trying to bring awareness to the problem of elder abuse, basically? Sure. So every year, Elder Abuse Awareness Day internationally is celebrated on June 15th. Um, here in the Triad, we have an Elder Abuse Awareness Walk. This year, it will be held on Saturday, June 17th at that's Triad right. yeah, Park right. in Kernersville. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be great. I'll come back around to that in just a second. Um, since you and I are talking about this, how, how would you define elder abuse? Everybody has sort of an idea of, in their head, and maybe there's a consistent idea that you can share with us. How would you define it? Sure. So elder abuse is any intentional act that causes harm to an older adult or a disabled individual. Um, it can include a variety of different types of mistreatment, everything from physical abuse, verbal abuse, exploitation, as well as neglect. And can this often happen from a family member to a family member? Unfortunately, yes. Um, often it is a caregiver. Not a, very often it could be someone the older person doesn't know, a scammer. You, you know, hear about the Nigerian scammers and things like that. Right. Certainly scams and frauds do occur, but unfortunately most often it is by a person that in, that individual knows. How widespread is this problem uh, with elder abuse? Unfortunately, it's quite widespread. Um, in North Carolina in the last year, there were over 20 21,000 reports of elder abuse, and those went to Adult Protective Services. What research has shown is that for every one, in, one instance that does get reported, there are four more that don't ever get reported. Right, and when you talk about reporting, I mean, what, what should I do if I suspect elder abuse? I mean, do you just pick up the phone and, and call? Or, I mean, what kind of processes? Sure. So if an individual suspects that someone is being abused, neglected, or exploited, um, what we want you to do is contact the County Department of Social Services. It would be the Adult Protective Services Division. Depending on the type of abuse, it may also be appropriate to report to law enforcement. Um, and in making that report, you don't have to know for sure or prove that abuse is occurring. You can just trust your gut instinct. Right. And if you think that something isn't right, then go ahead and make that report. Uh, you mentioned earlier, and I want to ask Adrian about this, the, uh, the June 17th Elder Abuse Awareness Walk. Adrian, why is it important for everybody to take part in that and support it, do you think, to get the community behind it? 
Well, within the Area Agency on Aging, we are passionate about raising awareness on issues that impact older adults, like elder abuse. This is our walk that we've done for many, many years. We bring out hundreds of individuals with information that we leave them with to be able to go back and be advocates for themselves in the event that they are exploited or know someone that is. Yeah, I just think what y'all are doing is so important in, in trying to, you've helping us understand this today in this segment very briefly, and there's a lot more we could discuss and maybe get you back sometime, but more importantly, you're trying to get us to think about preventing it too. And Absolutely. I just appreciate what you're doing. Up on screen, the general website, ptrc.org, ptrc.org, and remember that June 17th, Elder Abuse Awareness Walk. Adrian and Kim, thanks for everything. Thank you for Thank having you us. For having us. We'll be right back after this. Every cookie sold in the Girl Scout cookie program helps girls learn lifelong lessons in people skills, decision making, money management, goal setting, and business ethics. It's amazing how much you can learn from a cookie. The Girl Scout Cookie Program. Think outside the box. Everyone could use a little help with their bills, especially these days. At Duke Energy, we're offering easy ways to help keep your energy bills more manageable. With programs that allow you to pay the same amount each month or pay in installments over several months. Plus, special financial assistance from the Share the Light Fund for those facing hardships. We're Duke Energy, and we're here to help you. Back now on Try It Today, just about time for the round table, but a quick shout out to the good folks here at Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. Come on out and visit the garden. It's a lovely place, and just in honor of that, I have three lovely people with me. The lovely Ogie Overman is here with us, the lovely and talented Wendy Poteet, CEO and President of Shift Ed, uh, and we heard from them earlier on a segment, and of course, Keith Granberry, who is also lovely, is a founder of Helping Hands <laughs> Consultants. Before we get to the main topics, I want to do a quick plug for Blue Jeans and Bourbon Fundraiser to benefit Ricky Prohl's Power Play Foundation. That's Thursday, June 8th. For tickets, you can go to prolificpark.com. It's a good cause. They help a lot of kids. All right, guys and gals, first topic. Republican state lawmakers want to expand the K-12 through private school scholarship program so that families of any income level can receive financial assistance to attend private school. Are you okay with upper-income families getting financial assistance to send their child to private school? Oh, Overman. That's so Republican. That is just so typical. Don't like it. Give the money to the people who don't need it. Right. Pitiful. When do you give a lot of scholarships, help a lot of kids? What do you think about this proposal? I think it's ridiculous. We just fixed our scholarship model to not do this. Yeah. And we just fixed it. So. Keith, what do you think? The rich get richer. Why, why can't we put money in public schools that need it? What, I mean, what, what's the problem with that? Yeah, there are a lot of problems with it. A number of states are rolling back child labor laws so that kids can fill labor shortages. In Ohio, 14-year-old kids can work till 9 p.m. on school nights. Um, and in Wisconsin, there's a proposal for 14-year-olds to be able to serve liquor at bars and restaurants. Are you okay with this trend to help businesses stay in business, Okie? No, I mean, that, there's a genuine staffing shortage, especially in the hospitality industry, but the, that's not the answer. I mean, I don't know, maybe pay them more or, or something, but that ain't it. Wendy? We can't let our adult problems fall on the shoulders of children. Like children serving alcohol at 14 just exacerbates another problem of alcoholism to me. Yeah, well put. Thank you, but Keith. You can't drink alcohol, but you can serve it. Right. I mean, how, how ridiculous is that? I mean, what, what state was that? Yeah, that was in uh, Wisconsin, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why are you making me go back through my notes? They've been eating too much cheese. Now i got to go back through my notes. They've been eating too much cheese in Wisconsin. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Too much, too much cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I've moved on. I've moved on. Now I had to go I back. I've moved to on, my... too. Well, let's yeah. move on. Let's yeah, move I want on. you to move on. Yeah, let's move on. All right. <laughs> here, in the, uh, here in the triad, there's been an unwritten agreement between some localities not to try and lure companies away from your neighboring city and county. Alan Joins and Keith Holliday used to talk about, Nancy Vaughn to some extent. But now Gil and Greensboro are considering offering a Winston-Salem company $30 million in incentives to relocate. Would you like to see the state legislature's ban incentive such as that? Oh. Yeah, actually I would. I did a story years ago where uh, High Point paid Green, uh, this company 
that was maybe a hundred yards right in Greensboro to move. I remember that for the tax base. How yeah. stupid! It is. It, it didn't uh, impact anything yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Wendy. It, it caused some divisiveness when you start to do things like that. So probably a good yeah. idea to stick with the old way of doing business. And you're not creating jobs, right, Key? No, that's not right at all. Yeah. I, I think I think we have to open competition. So if there's competition, that that then you need to have that. So I think it's okay if you poach another a city. You if do. you're gonna if you're going to add additional jobs if you're and add, okay. resources, All right. absolutely. All right, Target has removed a number of LGBTQ items after receiving threats of violence against store employees. Now, chief among the objectionable items is a swimsuit for trans women who have not yet had gender affirming surgery. The question is, did Target make a mistake by selling these items to begin with, or did they make a mistake by removing them? Ogie. Okay. Well, I think they should not have caved to the, the knuckle draggers, the backward folks that just do not have a clue about uh, they the world around them. them. I mean, Wendy. I just feel like if you make a decision about what you're going to do, stand 10 toes down in it, they should have had a conversation about what the backlash was going to be before it happened anyway. And then stuck with it. And stuck with it. Key? I, I've never seen these swimsuits, but I'm assuming that they were were gender uh, neutral, so I think they should have yeah, stuck with it. anything neutral about them. <laughs> I think they should have stuck with it. That's a neutral show. <laughs> they, they definitely should have stuck uh, with it. Montana yeah. has become the first, and I'm talking about Montana now, Keith. Okay. They ain't going back Montana. once we do this. Okay. Montana has become the first state to ban Chinese-owned TikTok. Says it will fine TikTok $10,000 a day each time somebody's able to download the platform. Is the ban a proper security measure? Does it violate our rights? Quickly, Ogie. Well, probably neither. I, I, I just don't get it. And, 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 you know, the legislature doesn't get it either. That nobody gets it. Understand and I really don't knowledge. have the answer. You, what do you think? I mean, I love TikTok, so as long as it stays in Montana, I, I don't understand what the problem is. They're trying to ban it in Montana. What do you think? Well, stay with No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Montana, nobody's using TikTok in Montana anyway. <laughs> 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 what are they banning? All right. A Moose number, honey, uh, what are, I mean, what are we talking about here? That's right. All right. Well, we got just a little bit of time left. So let me go to, uh, yeah. Okay. Diane's telling us, Diane's holding up one finger. That should be the index finger, by the way, Diane. Uh, finally, when, you like that? Finally, when traveling to Milwaukee for a road game, a member of the Dodgers baseball team refused to sleep at the Fister Hotel because he says it's haunted by ghosts. Guys and gals, do you believe in ghosts? And is there anywhere that you refuse to stay overnight? Ogie. I don't think I believe in ghosts. Uh, the only place I can think of would be Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, Mar you would not stay at Mar-a-Lago. Wendy, any place it. you wouldn't stay? I would not do it. I probably agree with that, but if you give me some good three account sheets and a comfortable pillow. You stay anywhere. Stay just about anywhere. Keith, any place you wouldn't stay overnight? Yeah, I'm not staying any place near a graveyard. No, I'm, if it's a graveyard anywhere near, I'm not staying there at or, all. Or even Wisconsin. Or, or Montana. Or Montana. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Geography Show with Keith. Uh, uh, that's all the time we have. Oh, except for this. The new Mission Impossible film's coming out. Tom Cruise is going to jump over a cliff, right down into a cliff. You know, Tom's big into Scientology and, and said the director, boy, it's really scary. And the cliff jump is uh, frightening, too. See, he's into Scientology <laughs> and uh, they're scared of fighting. Jumping anyway. in Montana. All right, for all of us here from Montana, I'm Jim Longworth. <laughs> we'll see you next week.